Yeah. And let me tell you, see, we would have we would have never gotten all the wonderful characters that you know are just. No, oh, I think yeah. <laughs> that is so yeah. true. Isn't it? I don't I think know. about it like that sometimes. Yeah. yeah, I don't think about that sometimes. Oh, Michael Jackson, am I black or white? <laughs> yeah, yeah. We don't know. <laughs> a black or white, you tell me. We don't, we don't know. <laughs> he said, if we got a rescue, so I guess I am black. <laughs> I guess I am black. Sure, you know, I look purple. <laughs> I'm telling you, look, I showed that to my son, my six-year-old son. He he mm -hmm. he he be having that on replay on YouTube. Talk about the hey, and then what the Home Alone one? Hey, that's so wrong. <laughs> really? Yes, he loves it. Yes, it, it just shows you that uh, good. You know, if it's, if it's good, it's great. It's gonna transcend generations. You know what I'm saying? Like he really yeah. loves it. Yeah, you know, I think it's Kendra Spears because I found that he has the same birthday as you, too. So, Scorpio season. No. no. Are you serious? That's cool. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. So, your story is amazing and so very touching. So, tell us about how your mother, Barbara Davidson, came into your life. Whew. Um, randomly, but not really. You know... I was abandoned in the trash, I was abandoned in trash, in the trash, and she found me just by something, she was walking by the pile of trash, and she said something told her to look under this tire that was laying in the trash, and she saw my foot under there, and that was the beginning of my tale, you know, that tells that, tells that story right there. You know? Right, right. It all went from there. I, 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 I was like, oh my goodness, you know. Thank God she found you, you know? Mm-hmm. It was, it was, um, yeah. Yeah, she, and she sounded like she was the coolest mom, like, you know, she really did. Like, she defended you a lot in school, too, you know? Yeah. She did. I mean, she wasn't for no racism. Right, you know, right, right. She wasn't for that shit at all. So she, and she taught me about who I was, too. She, right. she wanted me to know exactly what I was. And she wanted me to know that it was good. And that, that it was important to be that. You know, she taught me all the things that I needed to know. So that I can express that in, in a trillion ways. So that's the benefit that came out of it mostly, you know? And no one would think that would come out of a person, a white person. So yeah. she actually, you know, yeah, go ahead, go ahead. You read it. So. Oh, go ahead. No, no, you go ahead, because I I've been accused of talking too much. Oh, no, I want I wanna hear what you what you read. Go ahead. Well, I was just going to say that, you know, you did, your family moved to D.C. and you did encounter some, you know, racism and things you really didn't understand, you know, right? Because of the time that it was in America, it's like interracial families, you know, it's like some people just weren't accepting of that. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yep, yep. And, and it was just, it was just a timing thing, you know, where, where everything just kind of came around. Yes, well, definitely. Now, the thing, though, that I love is that you said that growing up the way you did, like, allowed you to be able to relate to anybody. Like, I always thought that was genius. You can get black people and white people together and make them laugh about, like, things that in other situations they might think is pussy. It's like genius, you know? And then you, you say you mm -hmm. have that. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I, um, it was just, you know, because of the where I was like a seed, you know, and I got planted in, you know, in my life, I got planted in the garden of all kinds of different people. Mm -hmm. So I'm influenced by, by every group, every type of person, you know, ethnically, religiously, you know, spiritually, however, I got touched by all of them, you know. 
Right, and that, right. that's, you know, that, that influenced my comedy. That influenced me as a person. Yeah, definitely would think that would um, really shape, you know, who you are. Um, for sure, you know. Um, and then just talking about, like, how you were coming up in your career. And, like, you was a comedy store. And you got a chance to, oh, my gosh, witness, like, Richard Pryor. And, you know... Uh, that story was hilarious. <laughs> <laughs> true, true. Yes. Um, and just what was it like, like, with being around them? You know, Rock Harris and even like Eddie Murphy, like all, all of them. Like, what was the experience like, like, like working alongside them? Exhilarating. Exhilarating. It was. It was. You know, I can't match the experience. It's hard to match the experience. Man. Because I was right where I was supposed to be. See, I was becoming one of the best comics there is. But I was around the best comics that there is. You see? Right. So, I, you know, here I am. It's like, it's like feeling like Michael Jordan, probably. You know, or mm -hmm. feeling like Tom Brady, probably. You know, being around the best people that elevate you to another level. You know, bring out the best in you. How can I go around Eddie Murphy and not be my best? How can I go around Martin Lawrence, D.L. Hewley, uh, Robin Harris, uh, Roseanne Barr, Seinfeld, Chris Rock? How can I be around those people and not be good? Them being great made me even better because it was the level it was, it was the, the, the 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 level of the water was high right right definitely definitely uh so would you describe your your um the way you approach comedy as a certain way like do you have your own like philosophy like this is the tommy davidson style you know that's Nobody else is like you have a certain philosophy to drive that. Yeah, I do. It's the, it's it's the style that's an. I have the kind of style that's an un um, definable style. I got the undefinable style. You know, I got the style that you experience through experiencing it. If that makes any sense, it's an element of everything that you've seen in comedy in one. Right. So my style is kind of almost like a style of style. Okay. okay. You know, you just go in there, and you just laugh, and you laugh hard, and you get what I'm doing. And that's what it happens too fast. It happens too fast for you to analyze it, man. I'm okay. going right to the funny bone. I ain't playing. Well, that's what people come to see. So. <laughs> oh yeah. There you go. <laughs> you know you're doing it right. If that's exactly what you're mm -hmm. People say, I get this said to me all the time, you know, just like Danny Murphy, man, just like Kevin Hart, man. I mean, you know, you can do, you know, why don't you do what, like, when Kevin you know, or when Eddie Murphy, you know, a deal, you know, or, you know, a certain thing, he, he, and he can't, you know, he does it, you know, and then, and then this, and everything, and I'm, and, and I don't listen to none of it. Right. Because it's hard to do, to attach that to what I do. Mm -hmm. It's hard to use anyone as a reference when it comes to comedy. Because I have my own approach. Exactly. You know? Mm -hmm. So it's hard to describe. Okay. Well, that's, funny. Is, that's <laughs> what makes you you. There you go. Yeah. <laughs> exactly.